so many books. So little time. So many books. So little time. So many books. So little time. So, 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 so many books. Like I said, so many books, so little time. I'm Miss Tara, I'm a teacher for WQLN, and today is a very special day for me. I can't wait to share with you some of my very favorite authors. Here's one right here now, Shel Silverstein. He has written some great poems and also some great stories. Perhaps you've heard of The Giving Treat. Well, here's a poem that I thought would be great to start off, start off our time together today called An Invitation. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer. If you're a pretender, come sit by my fire, for we have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in, come in. So what is an author? An author is somebody who has the gift of storytelling or writing. They write down their stories and then we are able to enjoy them for many years to come. Some people are talented enough to be the author and illustrator. An illustrator is somebody that does the pictures. Sometimes there's a team, one author, one illustrator, and sometimes it's just one person. Today I told you I was gonna tell you my favorites, but that's very, very, very hard for me to pick. And it's probably hard for you to pick at home too, because anytime ask, someone asks you something, what is your favorite, hmm, and you really love something, hmm, you start thinking. And once you start thinking, you realize, I like a lot of different things in different ways. Just like I love all of you at home because you're all unique, you're all special, you're all different. And different is not bad, different is beautiful and it makes the world a beautiful, colorful, exciting place. Well, it's the same with books and authors. When someone asks me my favorite, I just think, how could I possibly answer that? I have tons of favorites. As a matter of fact, I love books so much, I collect them. Maybe you do too. I have more books that I love that I don't have because sometimes we have to make tough choices and just choose a few. So today I went through my book collection and I chose a few that I have time to share with you. All of the books behind me have a special reason and a special place in my heart for a special reason. For example, I love this book right here, Good Night Gorilla, because I love the pictures. There's barely any words in it, but the pictures tell the story. It's pretty neat. And then I love The Little Red Hen because, well, that's a classic. I've had that for a lot of years. It stood the test of time, and I can hear it over and over, and it teaches a lesson. I love a book that you learn a little lesson at the end, and you don't even know you were learning. I love Corduroy because it pulls at my heartstrings, and I'll tell you why when I share it with you. The Napping House, oh, it's one of those repeat stories. And repeat stories are so fun to read and listen to. And then we have Joseph Had a Little Overcoat. That's one of my favorites because not only did it win a special gold Caldecott Award for being awesome in pictures, but it also teaches us about another culture or country. Then I love Fortunately because it's just silly. Wait till you see it. And then I love I Am Just Right. I'm going to share that one with you at the end and then you'll know why. 
So I'm going to share each one of these with you, and then I'll explain to you what they're about and why I chose them. I'm going to start with Goodnight Gorilla. Like I said, this one barely has any words, but if you look closely at the pictures, you'll get a kick out of it. And I'll do a little bit explaining too, to help you through the story. Enjoy. Goodnight Gorilla by Peggy Rathman. Peggy Rathman is also the illustrator. Good night, Gorilla. You see what Gorilla's doing there? Taking the zookeeper's keys, hmm. And out goes Gorilla, tiptoe. Good night, Elephant. What do you think Gorilla's gonna do for Elephant? Oh, I see someone else following behind. Did you notice the little mouse with the banana? Let's look back. <gasps> Did you see it there too? Keep your eye out. You'll see that little guy everywhere. Good night, lion. Looks like elephant's free. Do you think they're going to let lion out? Good night, hyena. Good night, giraffe. They have quite an animal parade, and I don't think the zookeeper has any idea. Good night, armadillo. Shh. There's our little mouse and our banana. Look where they're going. They're leaving the Z-O-O. -O. What does that spell? Zoo. Very good. And they're all following the zookeeper home for night-night. I still don't think that zookeeper knows, do you? And in they go. Uh-oh. Looks like Mrs. Zookeeper's already sleeping. Everybody's tired, but that zookeeper still doesn't see what's in his bedroom. Good night, dear. Look at who's in the bed with them. Good night. 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 I bet that was shocking to hear all those good nights, right? What? Surprise. Uh-oh. Totally busted. All right. Back goes Mrs. Zookeeper with gorilla in hand and the whole parade of animals. I still don't think that zookeeper knows. Good night, zoo. Uh-oh. Somebody got the keys again and somebody else. Notice the gorilla saying, shh, don't tell anyone. Good night, dear. Good night. Look who's crawling in the bed. Good night, gorilla. Zzz. Now we know why they had that banana, right? The end. It's so awesome, right? I just think Peggy is so great. She wrote another great book called uh, Officer Buckland Glory, which is another really funny and really silly book that you might enjoy if you like this one. Did you see how worn out this is? The pages are even falling apart because I love it so much. I've been sharing it with children everywhere. You know, speaking of worn out, I have another really worn out book here I'd like to share with you called The Little Red Hen. The Little Red Hen is a classic Aesop's fable. That means it's a very old story written a long time ago. And since then, many authors have rewritten it and done their own version of the pictures. One of those famous authors is Paul Galdone. He has done a lot of fairy tales. Now he lived a while ago, over a hundred years ago. So even though he's not with us any longer, his books are still here making people happy. That's pretty great, right? Like I told you, this is an awesome book because it's a classic. It's been around a long time. And there's a little lesson at the end. See if you can figure out what it is. The Little Red Hen, author and illustrator, Paul Galdon. Once upon a time, a cat, a dog, and a mouse, and a little red hen all lived together in a cozy little house. The cat liked to sleep all day on the soft couch. The dog liked to nap all day on the sunny back porch. 
and the mouse liked to snooze all day in the warm chair by the fireside. So the little red hen had to do all the housework. She cooked the meals and washed the dishes and made the beds. She swept the floor and washed the windows and mended the clothes. She raked the leaves and mowed the grass and hoed the garden. And one day when she was hoeing the garden, she found some grains of wheat. Who will plant this wheat? cried the little red hen. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen. And she did. Each morning, the little red hen watered the wheat and pulled the weeds. And soon the wheat pushed through the ground and began to grow tall. When the wheat was ripe, the little hen asked, Who will cut this wheat? Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen. And she did. When the wheat was all cut, the little red hen asked, Now who will take this wheat to the mill to be ground into flour? I bet you at home can help me now. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen. And she did. The little red hen returned from the mill carrying a small bag of fine white flour. Who will make a cake from this fine white flour, asked the little red hen. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. She gathered sticks and made a fire in the stove. Then she took milk and sugar and eggs and butter and mixed them in a big bowl with fine white flour. And when the oven was hot, she poured the cake batter into a shining pan and put it in the oven. Soon a delicious smell filled the cozy little house. The cat got off the soft couch and strolled into the kitchen. The dog got up from the sunny back porch and came into the kitchen. The mouse jumped down from his warm chair and scampered into the kitchen. Why do you think all the animals were running to the kitchen? You guessed it. The little red hen was just taking a beautiful cake out of the oven. Who will eat this cake? asked the little red hen. I will, cried the cat. I will, cried the dog. I will, cried the mouse. Do you think the little red hen should share? But the little red hen said, All by myself, I planted the wheat, I tended the wheat, I cut the wheat, I took the wheat to the mill to be ground into flour. All by myself, I gathered the sticks, I built the fire, I mixed the cake, and all by myself, I am going to eat it. And so she did to the very last crumb. I love their faces. Like, what's happening? And I bet you guessed it. After that, whenever there was work to be done, the little red hen had three very eager helpers. The end. Now you see why it's a classic. It's fun to read together because everybody can chime in on the not I, not I, not I. And I love at the end her where you're not sure, are the hens going to share or is she not going to share? And you can see she didn't share because the lesson is if you don't work hard and help, then you don't get the reward. But those that work hard get a great reward. And after that, she never had trouble getting her friends to help her again, did she? It's a great story. Well, I shared two of my favorites and then I went to put them down and thought, oh, I have a great craft to share with you. There is a fun way to store your favorite books by your favorite authors that you can keep by you all the time. Check it out. Let's make a book box. All you need is any cardboard box and your imagination and any art supplies you can find around your house. I'm going to run around and gather as many as I can. You do the same and we'll see what we can find. So I found this half a can of spray paint in my garage and then I found this glitter in my craft jar. So I'm going to spray paint the box, sprinkle it with glitter, and once it dries, I'll show you how it came out. So I was just finishing up the book box that I was telling you about. The spray paint dried, the glitter dried. I added some letters. I made them 3D. I made them stick out with sponges. Real easy, right? And it spells B-O-O-K-S, books. And down here I put I love, books I love. This box is only getting my very favorites in it. 
And what's fun about what you're making your own book box is you can put books in and take them out and change the books all the time or add new ones. If you want to learn how to make a book box at home, just go to wqln.org slash homeroom under favorite authors. You'll find this craft and many other really neat crafts that you can try at home. All right, so, so far we've read a few stories together. Let's put them in our book box. Remember Goodnight Gorilla? Great pictures. There's one. And then I read the one with the lesson, The Little Red Hen, an old but classic, right? And I'm gonna read you another book that's my favorite. This book has a lesson at the end too, but that's not why I love this book so much. This book, Joseph Had a Little Overcoat, is one of my very favorites because this author is also the illustrator, Sims Tavik. And wow, talk about talented. He takes this really neat idea of cutting out different holes on the pages. Check it out. And then when you turn the page, that hole becomes something in the picture. The fun part of this book is while you're reading it, you try to guess what the next page is going to turn into. I think you'll get it when I start sharing it with you. Let's read it together. Joseph had a little overcoat. Author and illustrator Sims Tabak. Joseph had a little overcoat. It was old and worn. So he made a jacket out of it and went to the fair. Joseph had a little jacket. It got old and worn. So he made a vest out of it and danced at his nephew's wedding. Joseph had a little vest. It got old and worn. So he made a scarf out of it and sang in the men's chorus. Joseph had a little scarf. It got old and worn. So he made a necktie out of it and went to visit his married sister in the city. Joseph had a little necktie. It got old and worn. So he made a handkerchief out of it and drank a glass of hot tea with lemon. Joseph had a little handkerchief. It got old and worn. So he made a button out of it and used it to fasten his suspenders. Joseph had a little button. One day he lost it. Now he had nothing. So Joseph made a book about it, which shows you can always make something out of nothing. I bet you were able to guess some of the things in the book, weren't you? Do you remember what the last thing that Joseph lost in this book? He lost a button, very good. So let me put this in our book box. And then I wanna share with you another story that has a button in it called Corduroy. Why this is one of my very, very favorites is because when I heard this when I was a little girl, it made me realize that my toys do have feelings just like me. Ever since then, I never looked at stuffed animals the same again. I love them. Matter of fact, I still collect them today. Only now I collect them that are characters in books, like Corduroy. Let me share this one with you too. Maybe it'll become one of your favorites. Corduroy, author and illustrator, Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator, and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? 
I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there, before his eyes, was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until, pop, off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang, into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. And when he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that? He exclaimed, somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customer came into the store in the morning, and there looking at him with a wide, warm smile was the small little girl he had seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you, the sail lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl's side bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace at the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. I bet you have a special toy at home just like Corduroy and my bear here. I'm going to put Corduroy in my favorite book box here. And then I want to share with you a special place. Every town has a special place called a library. At a library, you can go and check out your favorite books or my favorite books or many, many other books. A person that works at a library and takes care of those books for us and helps us when we go there is called a librarian. I would love to take you there and show you a librarian so they can explain to you how you can join and enjoy the books too. Come with me. So here I am at that magical place called a library, yay, with my friend Miss Maggie, and she's so special because she is a librarian. Yay, so maybe you could tell everyone at home what a librarian does. Of course I can. So I am super lucky in my job as a librarian. I get to work here where we keep tons of books for everything that you might like, and you get to come here, look at them, decide if you might want to take them home. You can take them home, and then you bring them back. We just get to share here. It's so fun. And one of the best ways that we get to share here, everybody gets a library card. And to get a library card, all you really need is your caregiver that you live with, you need them to show some form of your address, something official. A bill's good, an ID is great, something that like is very, very, very serious that shows where you live. That works perfect you for mean us. Children can get them too. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh my if gosh. you are alive, you can have a book card. How fun to have your own library <laughs> card and come get your favorites out of the library. Oh right? yeah. Oh well, thanks for having us, Miss Maggie. Yeah, of course. And also, thank you for your, all that you do because she allows us to come here and have a special time together with books, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you. And come and see her at the library. I would love to meet you. Yay. I truly hope that you get to visit your local library very soon. Because you know who else used to be a librarian? Me, Miss Tara. I used to be a school librarian. And I can tell you there's nothing more wonderful than watching a child like you go into the library and pick out their very own books that they chose.
It's very empowering to make your own decisions. Finally making decisions that not a grown up made for you, but that you made for yourself. It builds confidence and it makes you feel wonderful inside, like you can do things all by yourself. Well, I have many more favorites that I would love to share with you. And I didn't even get to share all the ones that I hope to today. But now you know where you can go and check those out and borrow them all by yourself at the library. It's getting a little chilly. Let's go inside and warm up. Well, when we started our time together, I was telling you that there are so many books and so little time. And unfortunately, we are almost out of time together. But before you leave me today, I'd like to share with you another one of my favorite poems from Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein, my favorite poet. It's called Hug of War. I will not play at tug of war. I'd rather play hug of war, where everyone hugs instead of tugs, where everyone giggles and rolls on the rug, and everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. And you're always winning when you're spending time with your favorite books. There's nothing like hugging your favorite book and hugging someone you love and sharing your favorite books with somebody that you love is the best thing ever. I had fun with you today sharing some of my favorite authors and my favorite books and making a book box together and showing you where you can store your favorites at your home. Well, until next time, I hope that you keep hugging your books and reading your books and learning. And please keep on tuning into WQLN because there is nothing we love better than learning with you at home. I'll see you next time. Thank you.